Today I'm going to talk about the antiplatelet regimen for symptomatic arcade interventions. So we are lucky today. Uh, we have a recent guideline, European guideline, about the treatment of the patient with uh, arcades. I want to thank to Dr. Marius uh, and his colleagues for their great effort. And I'm sorry for the possible mentioning the same topics, but I think this is a good way to repeat, to learn. Uh, it's a good way to learn it. Uh, and we have also a recent practice advisor uh, from American Academy of Neurology about stroke prevention in this very specific disease. When we talk about symptomatic ICAT interventions, we are facing with two different scenarios. One is the hyperacute acute interventions, which is large vessel occlusions related to the ICAT. And the second one is interventions that we do electively for the secondary prevention of patients with symptomatic ICAT again. You know, in some regions of the world, the ICAT may represent the most common reason of all ischemic stroke we heard from the, our colleagues. And in the Asian population, it is sometimes the underlying cause of up to 40% of all vessel occlusions. And also the risk of stroke recurrence can be up to 20% at one year in some populations. Arcade is also uh, one of the risk factors for the mechanical thrombectomy failure and the reocclusion. Uh, unfortunately, we still don't have any randomized control tra clinical trial about the hyperacute management. So, in eligible light ve large vessel occlusions, we, do, we go directly for the thrombectomy. At first, we don't think that is there an underlying ICAT or something else. We just want to go and open the vessel. But uh, as clearly stated in the European Stroke Organization, when there is no uh, absence of atrial fibrillation, when absence of CT hypodense sign or MRI subability sign, there are watershed infarctions, old or new ones, and the trinkle type of lesions, and residual stenosis on DSA uh, after stent is open or after several attempts with the stent retriever. Or when you see the early ray occlusion, we, we have to think about that something is going on when probably we are dealing, deep and, uh, dealing with an ICAT related occlusion. And I also, from my patients, I can say that in our patient populations, when we see a patient with low NIH score or fluctuating NIH score, with an M1, middle M1 occlusion with a very good collaterals. I check for the other side of the vessels. I check for the ACA if there is some uh, stenosis that may help me that the underlying cause is the ICAT. What the guideline says in patients undergoing mechanical thrombectomy for an acute ischemic stroke due to an ICAT related intracranial artery occlusion, the benefit of additional infusion of glycoprotein 2b3 inhibitors after initial mechanical thrombectomy remains uncertain. It suggests enrolling patients in a dedicated randomized control trial that we heard. And they suggest that in, in, in a dedicated randomized control trial is not possible. GP2b3 inhibitors may be used as uh, rescue therapy after assessing the bleeding risk for patients uh, with an acute ischemic stroke suspect uh, to be caused by an underlying acute uh, ICAS or in case of unsuccessful mechanical thrombectomy. How will we uh, do that? They suggest that uh, if possible, make a flat panel CT detect detectors uh, for the hemorrhage that we can cause after several attempts of stent retriever, and after that, start intraterial infusion of GP2B3A inhibitors and check at least 15 minutes or more, and then you may take your stent retriever out, or in case you may go with the infusion with the GP2B3A inhibitor. What about angioplasty and stenting? Guideline says that it is still remain unknown, uh, if this intervention improves outcome, they suggest enrolling patient again in a dedicated randomized trial. 
whenever possible. And they give an expert consensus statement that if there's no dedicated randomized trial, we can't keep the, uh, keep getting this patient to death. Angioplasty or stenting may be used as a rescue therapy, especially after reocclusion or hem hemodynamically relevant residual stenosis after GP2B3A infusion. What about the ASA guidelines says? It says that efficacy of tyrofibon uh, and eptifibatate with TPA is not well established. So abduximab should not be administered concurrently with the IV uh, alteplas. And also IV aspirin within 90 minutes after the start of IV alteplas is not, should not be administered. Okay, these are the questions. What kind of GP2B3A we will give the patient? At what dose? Intraarterial or intravenously? Or when will we start the oral medication? These are really unknown questions. It depends on both logistics and your hospital protocols. For example, I live in Istanbul. Uh, we have Agrestat, but we don't have Integralin. So I have to choose, if I have to choose, I, I use Tyrofibon. Some other part of the uh, country in the world may also have this kind of problems. And your hospital protocol is also important. So what the literature says? In the literature, it's the most common drug was Tyrofibon. Usually it is uh, used as a local intraarterial injection from micropetheter, beginning from 0.25 milligrams to 2 milligrams. Most studies are coming from the Asia, and uh, this is one of them. They use low dose of intraarterial tyrofibon in 154 patients and conclude that it is relatively safe. And this is another study, again from Asia, searching for local tyrofibon uh, of infusion up to 2 milligrams. Uh, again, it says that local tyrofibon is feasible. There are some low dose tyrofibon continuous infusion studies, and in this study, they gave IV injections uh, at 0.4 and 0.5 milligrams per hour, and they found out that this is associated with favorable functional outcome. Also, there are some papers comparing, I said, intraglutin and tyrofibon in standard cases like this one. It, this is a retrospective analysis in their standard uh, 89 patients, they found out that tyrofibon using mechanical thrombectomy does not increase the risk of symptomatic hemorrhage uh, and mortality compared to the FTP batiate. And this paper is from the United States and patients have tyrofibon and chagrin and Leopro, I guess, loading those depending on local institution protocols. And they found out despite longer procedural times and despite more thrombectomy passes, 90 days outcome were comparable with patients with embolic LVO. What about the elective ICAT interventions? Uh, according to the current guidelines, symptomatic ICAT treatment is medical. You have to give your patient the best medical treatment. Uh, you have to give anti-agregants, anti-lipidemics, control vascular risk factors, hypertension, diabetes. You have to change lifestyle and encourage for quit for smoking. What is the best medical treatment in terms of uh, anti-aggregation? In the ASA guideline, first we know that 325 milligrams of aspirin is recommended in preference of warfarin. Second, we know that uh, if the index ischemic event is within 30 days, if the patient has a severe stenosis, additional clopidogrel, 75 mg to aspirin for up to 90 days is reasonable. And we also know that if there's a stenosis ipsilaterally, additional of ticagrel to aspirin for 30 days to reduce recurrent risk factors. What about the ISO guideline? In ISO guideline, it is recommended as dual antiplate treatments over single antiplate therapy, optimal duration of dual antiplate therapy is not clear, but they suggest uh, using up to 90 days after the index event. What if fails? Yeah, uh, patients are having the best of the best medical treatment, had an TIA or stroke against from his or her ICAT. 
In the ASA guidelines, it says that with the class 2B recommendation in symptomatic patients where severe stenosis of uh, the usefulness of angioplasty alone or stent placement to a prevent ischemic stroke in the territory of the stenotic artery is unknown. This is also in the ESO guideline, best medical treatment is again recommended against angioplasty or stenting, but as expert consensus statement also suggests considering and the vascular treatment as a rescue therapy in selected patients with symptomatic high-grade stenosis in all, uh, after the clinical resource uh, in recurrence despite mass medical treatment. What is this selected patients? We, there are different types of uh, selected patients. Again, it differs from country to country, but these are the most common ones. Again, uh, some of them is the for the United States and for the AHASA guidelines for the own label use of the wingspan. In the patients age with the 22 to 80 degrees and most recent stroke more than seven days before intervention. And there has to be a high degree stenosis due to the atherosclerosis of the intracranial uh, artery related to recurrent strokes and MRS scores less than three and history or two or more. It depends with stroke sub subtypes and despite the aggressive medical treatment. If we're gonna do a stent, we will wait for the hemodynamic stroke patient for two, I don't, I'm not sure. It depends, but these are the most common selected patient population for ICAT interventions. What about the uh, uh, antiplatelet cells when we plan to do angioplasty or stenting in ICAT? Because, you know, some of the patients are already under best treatments uh, and angioplasty and stents can also influence further thromboembolic events. And do we have to change our medication? Uh, are they effective enough or are they protective enough to prevent the stenosis? This is something also we don't know yet. There is no consensus about the antiplatelet regimen. In the very uh, earlier, there was two, two very different applications, but after the samples, it is more a little bit clear, but there is still no consensus. Early beginning of 2010, with the Sylvia stenting patient, they used only dual antiplatelet treatment for just four weeks. Again, in Apollo stent uh, tr trial, they used double integration for six months and then aspirin only. In the multi center experience with wingspan, they used dual anti treatment for four weeks only. Sampras, we know aspirin with 325 milligrams per day and clopidogrel 75 milligrams for 90 days. And visit trial, again, it was for three months for dual anti treatment, but some changes in the aspirin doses, they also used 81 milligrams of aspirin. More and more trials comes from the Asia and coming this 100 milligram aspirin plus 75 milligram clopidogrel for three months. And then aspirin became, uh, uh, only aspirin became a preferred treatment. Again, this is from China registry and the CASIS trial. In this trial also they use 100 milligram aspirin and 75 milligram clopidogrel for 90 days and aspirin only after that. This is the common usage. What is the common usage? The common usage is the aspirin. If you live in uh, Asia, it is 100 milligrams. If you live in the United States, it's 325 milligrams. You use clopidogrel, 75 milligrams for 90 days and then aspirin only. But there are still questions. Is it clopidogrel is a good choice? And also about duration of the treatment. 90 days is enough uh, for prevent further ischemic events. Why these questions about the clopidogrel? We know that uh, it has to be metabolized to become an active form to, uh, and we know that approximately 25% of the white people from European descent and up to 60% of the Asian population carry some genetic uh, mutations that leads this drug resistance to the patient. And we also know mostly from our aneurysm cases, 
We do a testing for the clopidogrel. It seems okay. And after some time, patient come again. We tested it again. We find, we find some results, both, both increase and also decrease in the responsiveness. So is there another drug, uh, is a potent, more potent drug that we can use in stroke patients? There are multiple uh, clinical trials using Ticagro in stroke patients, and they show that they are at least safe as clopidogrel or ASA in stroke patients. But also the Thales uh, study, the subgroup analysis, the Thales study showed that the patient with ipsilateral cranial cervical stenosis had a significantly lower rate of stroke or death on Ticagrelor plus versus aspirin alone patients. But there's no enough data to use this drug for angioplasty and stenting in ICAT patients as the first line therapy. You also know this view trial. Uh, this field trial shows that if you select patients very strictly and if you obey the rules, and if a dear, real experienced doctors do the angioplasty and stenting, okay, there is still a room for stenting and angioplasty in ICAT patients. This study also showed us an important issue that they encourage their uh, participating hospitals to do antiplex resistance testing. Among their patients, 50, 65 of them had uh, tested and 21 of, of them had either dose adjustments or new medications if the testing dem demonstrated subtherapeutic levels or resistance. The subgroup analysis probably will show up a uh, pathway to follow us. What about the duration of the dual anti-aggregation treatment? Is three months enough? Just as the study showed uh, the results of dual antiplatelet therapy beyond 90 days in the SAMPLES trial, and this is, shows that longer use of dual antiplatelets may lower the risk of both in uh, risk of stroke in both medical arms and stented arms, but may increase the risk of major hemorrhages. We have to be careful when we uh, plan to prolong dual antiplate treatment in terms of hemorrhages. But again, we may use testing the medication, lateral ductility, again help us in this situation. If you want to prolong dual antiplate treatment, we can find with the testing, find the hyper-responders or hyper-responders, uh, which we are under risk of hemorrhage or Again, recurrent ischemias. As a summary, the hyperacute interventions, we need more data to find correct antiplatelet regimen for elective interventions, dual antiplatelet therapy for 90 days, and then aspirin only. We have to test for the drug resistance. And if we have that kind of uh, resistance, we can change or dose adjustments if needed and test it again. There may be some problems. We also have problems with Tigagrelol and prosugrel for aneurysm cases, but not in stroke cases. And we also need more data for better antiplates and duration of treatment. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any question from the audience? There is a question here. Any role of silostazole post-stenting for ICAD in preventing stenosis? Silostazole has been proven effective carotid yes. arteries. Yes, there are trials. Uh, not too much different from the clopidogrel plus ASA in recurrence of stroke, but also it uh, little bit decreases the stenosis rate. I have a question. I like it a lot, your questions about uh, uh, the use of clopidogrel is if it's correct to still use clopidogrel. But I always uh, do the same questions uh, in my mind uh, about the use of uh, um, glycoprotein to be, uh, to be 3A inhibitors. Uh, we use a lot of Kangaroo and uh, uh, we'll, we are very happy using Kangrel, but there is less experience in the world about Kangrel. Uh, what do you suggest? Uh, do you have any experience? 
No, I'm sorry. In Turkey, we don't have Kangaroo Law yet. Okay, here in the in the audience. No. Adnan, so do you use Kangaroo? Probably. You you? Can you have the the microphone? Uh, yes, we are we are very happy with Kangaroo Law. We uh, use it uh, in acute setting uh, when we need to do bailout stenting uh, after mechanical thrombectomy mostly. And uh, what we are uh, also try is a reduced uh, dosage of Kangrel. So we are we are, we are giving uh, like one third of the uh, recommended dose, and then we do the measurement of the of the platelet inhibition. And if we reach something over thirty percent, we are happy with that. Okay. In case of 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 stenting, for example, with the, with credo stent, we have the same experience. And uh, we do, normally the infusion rate is four micrograms per kilo per, uh, per minute. And uh, n now what we do is going to one microgram per uh, kilo per minute. And what we, with, what we saw is that uh, uh, we did um, with Kangaroo more than 150 patients. And uh, the last 50 approximately with uh, reduced dose. Uh, we have no more uh, hemorrhagic complication with no difference in the uh, uh, reocclusion rates. Do you have the same experience? Yeah, very similar, exactly. Yes. Okay. And then, then we are leaving the, the uh, continuous infusion during, usually during overnight, and then we do a quick CT in the morning, and then we switch to peroral uh, medication. Yeah, reducing the, the infusion rate, you can prolong a lot of time. The, also some exactly. days if you want. Uh, it's like the bridging therapy. Exactly. Yes. There's one question. What, what does your administration say? Because uh, we always hear it's too expensive. We cannot afford it. How do you argument? The price of the single vial is the same of Agrastat in Italy. Of a, of a single vial of, uh, of Kangaroo is, uh, is the same as of Agasat. If you use it uh, in uh, reducing the dose of infusion, you can prolong the, the infusion for uh, 12 hours, so you can arrive at 12 hours. And uh, the, when we do uh, interventions, we, lo we, sp we spend a lot of money. Our interventions exactly. are very expensive. Five, uh, the vial in, in Italy is about uh, 500 euros. I don't think our hospital care about 500 euros. <laughs> I don't know. There's one question on anticoagulation regime after credo stenting of M1 stenosis with complete covering of the anterior A1 origin. If there's a if there is a pontilateral site, you don't have to worry too much, I guess. But if it's the hemisphere is dependent on that A1, I don't think so that it makes too much difference. I agree. I think it doesn't make any difference. You wouldn't change your regime if you cover any side branch, unless it's a flow diverter, maybe. But uh, even there, we know that... It's not a huge uh, concern generally, but uh, if you stand M1 and uh, you have to cover A1, uh, I never experienced any complications in the uh, ACA circulation. Okay, any I, any comments on that? Any experience with the credo? But and there is a question on uh, silostazole post uh, post stenting. Do we, you? We already read. Uh, we had that. Okay, sorry, okay. I was. Uh, <laughs> busy with this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> There's, there should be more questions. Are there uh, any how questions? do we proceed with the questions on the screen? No. One okay. out of three? Okay, so okay, we, will, we, will we go, go to the next speaker then.